In this next part of Navigating in Microsoft Project 2013, we want to explore the Gantt chart with details. As you may recall from our previous part, when we're looking at task-based information, sometimes we may want to look at uh, task-based information without assignments, but sometimes we're going to want to see the assignments or the, or the resources that have been assigned to the tasks. So there's really two branches here. One to the left that says we may want to see that information spread over time, for example, resource assignments by day, by week, by month, or sometimes we may just want to see summary information about assignments. The overall cost of an assignment on a task, the overall time or work on a task. So in that case, we're going to go task-based with assignments, not spread over time, says Gantt chart with details, or what I call a split window. And in this case, it refers us to note number two. So let's take a look at what note number two says. In this case, because we're splitting our window to reveal details, there's going to be an upper pane and a lower pane. The upper pane is fundamentally what we, reco what we covered with the basic Gantt chart. In the upper pane, we're going to see columns that may or may not show the information. So again, we'll look at uh, inserting columns or fields or applying tables or creating new tables. What we're really introducing in this part is the lower pane. And we see here there's uh, ways to look at different information like schedule work, costs, notes, objects by right mouse clicking. Okay, we see uh, different form views that we can look at. And we also see something called a details button. So let's go into Microsoft Project and explore this. So in Project 2013, uh, if I were, for example, on the task view, and I wanted to split my window, I'd want to click on the view ribbon and out to the right heel here we see a checkbox that says details so if I want to see the assignments for this task I click on details and what we see now is as I click on each task for example write proposal has one resource assigned higher architect has two resources assigned when I click down on task 6 I see that there's three resources assigned so in our note, in our PowerPoint, it says right mouse click in the lower pane. So again, the question is, am I seeing what I want to see? Let's, sit, let's say, for example, that I wanted to see cost-based information around these resources. If I right mouse click out in this gray area, I can choose something called cost. And in this case, because my resources don't have hourly rates assigned to them, the cost is zero. If I wanted to see notes that were attached. So if I had, for example, some uh, additional information about this task, I might see that here. Objects. I can insert Word documents, Excel spreadsheets, different kinds of objects if I wish. So these are uh, the, the, the task-based, uh, I'm sorry, the assignment-based information fields. We also see something called schedule. So for example, some of my resources may work different schedules on the same task. So if I wanted to see how that's looking, I could look at the schedule portion of the assignment. Now in addition to assignment data, I also see uh, the default view, predecessors and successors. I'm sorry, not the default. The default view is not predecessors and successors. The default view is resources and predecessors. Okay, so in this case, I'm seeing basic assignment information on the left, and I'm seeing the predecessors or the tasks that, that are preceding this task. I could see resources and successors or the tasks that are following this task, or I can see the successors and the predecessors. And this becomes useful when there are a large number of tasks linked to a single task. If we were to view that information up here, that can get a little bit confusing to see, for example, seven arrows coming into the same task. So this gives me information about the task that succeeds this task and the task that precedes this task. I can use this view to actually add information. So if I wanted to add a new predecessor, I could. Okay, in this case it's the same one, which is not a good idea. So if I need to hire a mover and locate a new site, I can manipulate the, the types. Finish to finish, finish to start, start to finish, start to start. Okay, same thing with the successors. When I click OK, that information gets applied. Okay. So in this case that's not a valid link, so I'm going to get rid of that. The same is true when I look at resource-based information. So if I'm looking at, for example, resources and predecessors, I can manipulate the units here and make this 75% if I wish and click OK. And that then gets applied to the task, which, in, which increases the duration. So this view is useful to give me information 
about a task, but it's also useful to actually manipulate information about a task. The other thing I'll mention about the details, if I uncheck it, it goes away. And if I check it, it comes back again. I sometimes call this lifting up the blind. If I want to reveal more details, I can lift up the blind. And the reason I call it lifting up the blind is down at the bottom right base of, of my right vertical scroll bar, if I follow my mouse all the way down here, eventually it turns to a bi-directional arrow that will allow me to, to drag this blind up, if you will, to reveal what's happening with these tasks. If I click on a summary task, it'll show me if there's resources assigned, typically not a practice in Microsoft Project. Okay, so anything I click on will show me what's assigned. I can move the divider to reveal more room down below, or less room down below, and more room up top. Or I can double click on the divider and it will remove the split. So in summary, when I was looking at task-based information, with assignments not spread over time. I went to the Gantt chart with details of the split window. I went to note number two to gave you some additional information about how to navigate in the upper pane and in the lower pane for this view.